Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Noelle and this is Influenced Colorist. I have a couple of wrap-up videos for the month of December. This one is coloring supplies and then I will do another video of what I colored in December. Hope everyone is having a great new year, staying safe and well. So these products, um, there's going to be a mix of things that I purchased and some um, that were my birthday, birthday gifts and Christmas gifts. Okay, so I'm really excited about these pencils. These are the Luminance Pencils by Karan Dosh, and I got the 12 set and the 20 set Portrait Assortment. I don't know why I'm always on the hunt for more pencils. I guess it's in our coloring world. It's a bit of an obsession, but I really want to concentrate on better quality pencils this year. So after hearing about these pencils, I bought a few single ones last month and tried them out. And I just really liked the way they felt um, and how they colored. So I definitely wanted those on my list. So um, my husband purchased these for me for my birthday. And I've already put them in cases. So I will show you the cases later on in the video. But even um, these... Um, boxes that they come in. They're like a nice hardcover box. And then inside is this foam tray. So um, not those plasticky trays or tin boxes. So it already feels so much nicer. So these are definitely the most expensive pencils I have. So it's going to take a little bit to build up my collection, but that's okay. That's kind of the fun of it. So, okay, there's those. Okay, next is, um, these are metallic watercolor set, and the company is CSY Art Gallery, and my mom gave me these for Christmas, so they come in this cute little mini tin box, and they are just some gold and um, silver shades and copper. I don't have any metallic watercolors, so I thought this would be the perfect little trial size. And I've already kind of swatched some of these so you can see. They're very sparkly, very shimmery. Now, this color I thought would be green, but it actually came out brown. But when you tilt it, you can see a little bit of like a green metallic or patina in there. So, yeah really pretty. Excited to try those out. Okay, the next few products are going to be chalk type products. The first one was from my daughter. Um, this is the Koei Noor um, Giaconda 24 set of soft pastel pencils. So I had bought a couple of individuals of the Pit Pastels by uh, Faber-Castell, and I really liked how easy they were to use, and especially getting into those small, tight areas. I didn't realize other companies made similar products, so when I was looking at Pit Pastels, these came up, and um, I thought they had a good color selection and a good price point. So you use them like pencils, and then you can blend and smooth, move the color around with a brush or sponge-like applicator. All right, and then the next ones, I think these were from my husband again. Um, these, um, the brand is called Pebbles. It's Classic Chalks 30 Earth Tones. And I feel like these are the most similar um, to my close to my heart chalk set. So these I purchased boy, a long time ago when I was a close to my heart consultant um, and did a lot more like stamping stuff. They had a couple different sets. So I've used these quite a bit in coloring books, um, but it's hard to recommend this, especially because um, they don't make this anymore. So I wanted to find a product that was comparable. And I think... Um, these are very comparable. So these are earth shades and it's just 
Um, they're just chalk pastels, but it's nice because you can use this applicator system and not have to worry about chiseling away um, on the little pastel blocks with an X-Acto knife. Um, these sets I actually think are better than the Close to My Heart ones because of the applicator system. They do have another uh, color palette. Um, these were just the earth tone shades. So, and again, I think the, um, comparing them to like pan pastels, they are a little bit more drier than pan pastels. Um, pan pastels are very creamy and very concentrated in color where these, you have to kind of work at getting that color saturation, but, um, very budget friendly. So the applicator system, you have this little clip here. And then you just um, go to the color that you want and you're going to pinch um, a size of little cotton ball here. It's kind of like a little pom-pom, a little bit more dense, I would say, than a pom-pom. And then you are going to uh, rub it on to that little cotton ball and then apply it to your page. So yeah, very easy system. I like how each color has their own little pom-pom there. All right, so this one is Pebbles Classic Chalks, 30 Earth Tone Shades. All right, these next products are going to be in the pencil sharpener um, product line. So I normally will use uh, this pencil sharpener or um, a Prismacolor sharpener. Um, I do have an electric pencil sharpener, um, but I'll explain the problem with that one here in a minute. So these are the Teagall handheld sharpeners. Um, they come two in a package, and I've seen lots of colorists use these or recommend these, so I'm anxious to try that. They have a dial, so you can choose the point size of how sharp or long you want the point. So um, I had an electric one that did that. Um, or no, sorry, it wasn't an electric one. It was like a wind-up one. And I used to take it to my art classes. And the kids loved that because the point would get so long. But trying to tell them to color lightly was difficult because they see that long point and they want to color really heavy. So they would um, they would break their point a lot and then I would have to sharpen it a lot. So it didn't last real long, but the kids got a, a kick out of it of how long the, the lead got. So anyway, I'm anxious to try these. And then um, this one is the... Afmat electric pencil sharpener and I was um, let's see this was a recommendation from the channel colorfully optimistic she had posted that it was on sale at Amazon and she has been using this and really liked it so so far I'm really happy with it too it sharpens really fast and it has a great point it's easy to dump out so this just turns and then you can dump out. So my problem with my other electric sharpener was that the Brute Finners pencils didn't fit inside. So this has a fairly large hole and then it has a little grip inside that will grip the pencils. So, so far it's been able to sharpen all my pencils from Polychromos to the Brute Finners. Here, I'll plug it in so you guys can see. All right, so I have one of the Brute Finner pencils, and let's see, I don't know if you can see how it grips in here. It's supposed to stop when it's done sharpening, but yep, it sharpens it pretty good. Okay, so there's that. And uh, my other issues with electric pencil sharpeners is that the pencil lid will break inside 
and then it jams the mechanism inside and so I always would have to like tear it apart and kind of search out that little piece of lead and dig it out and it was always such a pain so even if the lead breaks in this one I'm hoping it's not a pain to get out but so far and I've sharpened a lot of pencils I mean I've had to to dump this out um, several times already so and I haven't had any issues with the lead breaking or at least not jamming up in there all right, got a few new coloring books this month. So the first one is called Circulism Art Books, Color by Number. This one is Yuletide by Eclipse, A.J. Quinnell. And it is a um, color by number book. And, all, and they're all done in these little circles. So I purchased this book um, in the beginning of December. And um, it's nice because you don't have to worry about shading or, you know, if you just want something that you can just, um, the colors are already labeled there for you. You can just pick up some colors and color, then this is a great book. So when I was coloring it, I really was reminded, and I'm probably going to date myself here, of Light Bright. So if you're not familiar with light brights, it's a toy for kids, but it, um, it's like this light box and you put this black sheet of paper on and they have it, you know, kind of like a color by number. Um, and then they have these little clear colored pegs that you punch into the light box and into the paper. And then when you're done with your design, then you turn on the light box and it makes the little pegs glow. So it's really cool. But yeah, because it's on the black background and you have all these little circle dots, it just totally reminded me of Light Bright. So kind of fun to reminisce about that. Um, yeah, I like how it has the color wheel here. And then these were all um, blank dots. So you can kind of fill in your own colors there um, or just compare them to the original. So you have this reference and then each page will also give you um, the colors of the numbers. So you don't have to keep looking back. So anyway, kind of fun. Super, uh, Crayola super tips work really good in these books. Oh, the other thing I thought was kind of strange, as you can see, the paper is very shiny. And so I thought I would have a hard time with the markers, like, um, you know, kind of rubbing off or whatever, but it's not. And actually, when you're coloring on here, it doesn't feel glossy at all, which I thought was kind of weird. But anyway, it's nice, so don't worry too much about that glossy paper. All right, the next book is called Gentle Nature. And I haven't seen anyone work in this, um, but this is, so I don't know how new it is, but this one is a Carlin Douglas Black River art book. So it is Amazon printed paper. Um, there are 50 pages and 25 images. So each image is doubled. It's an eight and a half by eight and a half book. So, which is nice because the images aren't too big. Uh, the line art is uh, very light, so very different than my other grayscale books. The, um, it's almost like a medium kind of warm gray shade. And the line art has a lot of visual texture. So um, as you can see, like all these little dots, um, some have like scratch kind of sketchy marks to it. So very different than my other grayscale books from Carlin Douglas. Um, a lot of, you know, most of them, or all of them, I guess, have women faces and then more nature surrounding them. So plants, animals, some are more close up. And again, some of them have a lot of this visual texture and some of them don't have any like texture to it. So it's all Amazon printed paper, which means no watercolors. Um, but I've been using a lot of like the chalks, markers, and color pencils in these books, and they turn out really good. So I can do a quick flip through here of some of these pages. So as you can see, this one has like more scratchy, kind of sketchy lines.
you know, it's similar in style to some of the other books out there with all the flowers and the hair and animals kind of around the angel wing. That's really pretty. This one's cool with the seashells and look at the shells in her hair. So yeah, like I said, I don't know how new this one is. I haven't seen anyone work in it yet. Okay, so this one, um, there's not much texture inside these flowers. So, a little bit different. There's a good mix of like ocean and then just like regular plants. All right, and then that's the cover. All right, and I think that's it. So, yeah, so then the images just repeat from there. All right, so this next gift was totally unexpected from my husband. He got me an iPad Air, and um, I bought the case, and then... Um, it, he also got me the, the pen that comes along with it. So, yeah, my husband, I, I think, was probably listening to me and my son about how frustrating I was about recording my videos and how I was losing storage. So, um, I'm a Samsung phone user where my, the rest of my family all uses Apple products. So now I do have an iPad that I like, but it is really old. I mean, it's probably like one of the first generation of iPads, which means that I can never get any like new apps. So anytime I try to download an app, it says it's not compatible. So they were probably tired of listening to me rant about that. And so therefore they got me this. Also, I've been seeing some amazing things that people create on the app Procreate. So um, I was really interested in trying that. So my husband wanted me to be able to explore that app and hoping that I could also use this for recording and um, editing my videos. So I am going to try that too. All right, so um, ah, let me get out of here. All right, so the app is called Procreate. And if you haven't seen... Um, people work on this, you have to check it out because it's just really cool. It's like Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, but it's all done on the iPad. And then this pen works as like a pencil. And then I also got a screen protector that's supposed to feel like paper. So when you're drawing on it, it will feel like you're drawing on paper. So I, I haven't gotten that much into it. I'm but it all seems just really cool too. So anyway, um, yes, that was my big kind of unexpected gift from my husband. So thank you, hubby. And then a nice case for it too. I also bought a stand, which I'll show you here in a little bit that I plan on using for uh, recording. All right, next I'm gonna take my phone off the stand and show you a few more things. So. Hold on. Okay, so now that I have a bigger marker collection, I wanted a shelf that sits on top of my desk um, and uh, that I can easily, you know, grab markers from instead of having them in a bag. So I used to have, I don't know how many sets, I ended up having four or five different sets of the Ohuhu markers. And they were all kind of in bags in another shelf. And so I would have to go through and look through each set to find a certain color. So I wanted to get them in color order and easily um, accessible. So I looked online for shelves and I couldn't really find anything that matched the measurements that I wanted and, um, and the price point too. They all were kind of expensive. So I thought, well, maybe I can build something. So that is what I did. So... Um, it's not perfect by any means. I did kind of draw up a, a rough uh, plan here. So 
I wanted it to be um, anywhere between 28 to 30 inches long um, at the most, six inches deep, and then um, the tallest, about 14 inches high. So the cubbies, I wanted it to be at least five inches deep and so on. So as you can see, it's not quite the same as my, as my drawing here, but it actually has been working out really good. So the frame is just made with a, um, it's about like a five and a half inch wide and then this is a half inch thickness. So this was already white, um, and this I purchased at Home Depot. And then my brother-in-law actually helped me cut the wood and he had a nail gun, so he helped um, me get that together. Um, and then some of these other horizontal um, shelves. This wood is actually, I don't know why it's so expensive. I picked it out because I thought it would be like the cheaper wood, but it's um, hobby board. Um, balsa balsam wood I think and like I think the whole I think the whole project probably cost anywhere from 60 to 70 dollars and again like this board I don't know how long it was but I just bought one board and it was around like 15 16 dollars and then I bought several of these boards and they were like 16 dollars so I had originally planned on building it all with this this wood and um, I'm glad I didn't because it was going to be kind of hard to um, to nail that together. So the other boards, uh, let's see, those are called underlayment boards, and they were a two by four sheet. So I had them cut it down for me in different strips, and that is the shorter board. So you can see the hobby board is kind of the longer one that runs across, and then I have the smaller ones that go down. So I didn't feel like I needed anything too heavy, too supportive. And actually <clears throat> the vertical rows, those are just foam board. So uh, yeah, I, I, you know, don't look too closely at it, but it works. <laughs> so, um, and then as you can see, it is not, the cubbies are not perfectly aligned like I have in my picture. So I was kind of just eyeballing, um, the shelves kind of where I wanted. But again, it actually worked out pretty good because this, the top row is smaller than I wanted, but it fits those acrylic paints perfectly. And I did not have a, I don't have a, oh no, I do have a back on there. So the whole back of the, the shelf has foam board except for that shelf and for these lower ones here. Okay, and then so the next row, the second row, um, second and third row, these two rows are slightly smaller, which actually again worked out good because there weren't as many of those colors as the ones on the bottom. So these ones in the bottom will fill up the most. So the greens, the neutrals, and the grays had the most colors in them. And then I have room for this cubby. These are acrylic paint pens. And I don't know if I showed these in my last haul video. I don't remember when I got these. But these are the Ohuhu acrylic paint markers. And, and you know, I love Ohuhu. These are what those markers are. But these, um, I'm kind of disappointed in the nibs in these. They do give you extra nibs, but I found after you use it like one time, the nibs kind of clog. And so I don't really want to have to replace the nibs after each use. So I don't know. We'll have to see how, how that turns out. Like I don't want them to be like a one-time use thing. All right. So this next cubby, I just have some taller things. Again, this was kind of an accident, but it worked out good because then I can kind of hide away some um, brushes there. And then on the bottom are another it's kind of some little hideaways that I can put some little organizers in so this tray I have for when I'm you um I will put pencils or markers for a page that I'm working in and then I can just tuck it away in there and then this cubby has all the like miscellaneous things that I use on a regular basis erasers um pasta, gel pens, things like that. 
And then in that one, I still have some more like sticky notes and different leads and things like that in there. So anyway, um, yeah, that is my little project that I got to work on. Very happy with that. All right, and then while I have you at the markers too, I did get a few new marker sets too. Now, I won't be able to get any more markers because I think every shelf is completely full, but I should have pretty much all of the Ohuhu markers. So the new sets that I got were the skin sets, um, the skin tone markers, so there's those. And then the little stars I have on here, that is just showing ones that were duplicates from other sets. All right, and then the next set I got are the mid-tones. So that's what they look like. So this is kind of showing you how I did my swatches for my marker sets. Um, I had one for each set. So then once I got the shelf, and put them all in by color. Then I redid all my swatches and I put them in color order. So now when I'm looking for, say, a gray, then I can just pull out my gray swatch and find the gray in the cubby. So yeah, I think that will work out really nice. All right, and so since I'm right here, I'm going to show you the stand that I got for my iPad. So this was my old stand that I use, I put my phone in, and it's pretty good. This arm does not extend out any further, so sometimes it would pick up um, the end here, depending on my zoom. But um, this arm can go up a lot higher, um, but then I couldn't look down on it and see if I, if I was in shot. So um, anyway, it, it's worked out pretty good. But so for the iPad, if I start recording with that, then, um, oh, and you can see my ring light here too. Um, so this arm swings out and I can adjust it this way and the iPad uh, will fit in here. I've already tested that out. It does. Um, I don't like the way it is rigged on here. So you can see the stand there and then the weight on there. Um, it does not go up any higher, which is kind of a bummer. So that's why it's on the stand. But So we'll see if it's going to, to work out. Obviously, the iPad has a different uh, view mode than the phone. So I don't know if it will be better or worse, but we'll see. All right, and then the next thing I wanted to show you were the pencil cases. All right, so I had these two sets already. Um, I have my Prismas in here, and then this I bought when I bought the Brutefriner color pencils. Um, and then I had some other pencil cases, but I really didn't like the way they were. I had a few of like the roll-up kind or a one zipper and then they kind of like accordion style folded out or kind of like laid on top of each other so I never liked to to get them so um yeah so I just wanted to really organize my pencils and cases that I like to work with so the this is the one I picked for my luminance pencils thought the case was really pretty here's the brand name and I was planning on labeling everything with my Cricut, like vinyl lettering, but I watched one of Zucchini Kitty's videos and she said that the lettering um, doesn't stick very well on this um, texture or material. So um, I do have some of the more like leather looking ones and they would have stuck here. So I decided to do these little tags and I found these metal tags at Hobby Lobby and they're a Tim Holtz product so I already had the little chain so I kept those and then I just wrote with the white Posca pen on the back so I think that all looks nice and organized um, this one I'm a little disappointed in I love like the color of it so I'm using this one for my Black Widows but look how much taller it is I didn't realize that it was going to be taller so it kind of messed up my nice little 
line here, but that's all right. All right, I think that's it. So I hope everyone is having a good New Year's. I'm all ready and organized for the year 2022. So we'll see you later. Bye.